I value how people see myself, uh, you know, giving myself to anything that I do. You know, when I relate with other people and, and, and we need to achieve something, it's better to bring your, your best side, okay? Your bright side. Welcome back, everybody, to Connected Conversation Season 3. I'm Bob Mustachetti. This season has been a really interesting, introspective season as we cover the why for corporate real estate influencers. We've had some great guests on the show, and I am really happy to have this guest with me today. This person is somebody that I've known through the industry. Um, He's a very professional person. He's a very enthusiastic person. He's a very bright person. He's somebody that everybody has a lot of respect for, and I have a great deal of respect for as well. That person I'm speaking of is Luis Mayhorn from Newmark. He is the Executive Managing Director and Global FM Lead, who is with us today. Luis, hello. Did I get the last name right? Kind of. You, 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 did, you did right. You did. It is understandable. You know, <laughs> I, I did okay. Luis, thank, thank you for you having so, me, Bob. Thank and, you so much. Thank you. Yes, it is amazing. I'm a little bit intimidated. Let me tell you, I've seen your podcast and a lot of people you have here uh, had already in the past, a few of my friends. And, and thank you for that intro of, of myself. I think I don't deserve, but but I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I've been in the industry uh, for 20 years, uh, but I didn't start it like many of us in this industry. This is probably my third career path, okay? The longest, for sure. I I am an aeronautical engineer. You didn't know that. What? Uh, Yes, aeronautical engineer uh, by trade. um, And uh, I started my career flying uh, jets, okay? Uh, Passenger jets many, many years ago. Um, And then um, for some reasons, I needed to leave my country and I went to Spain. And I started my second career on the infrastructure world. So uh, I used my knowledge of aeronautical engineer and I kind of transferred that to uh, infrastructure, roads, bridges, uh, tunnels. And I was there for 10 years in that in that um, area and that market. Very, very great. I mean, I enjoyed a lot during that time working internationally work for a couple of projects for the World Bank in in development countries. And then uh, I started in a a company in Spain, a small company compared with, I mean, the big company have worked later, um, a division to do uh, integrated maintenance. At the time, uh, facility management was not very well known in Europe, only in the UK probably, but not in Europe, but certainly not in Spain. So I started there. And then after that, I really started in the facility management, corporate real estate industry around 2005 when I transitioned to Johnson Control. So from there on, I have been in this industry in different roles, both on the service provider side, on the client side, which have given me an amazing perspective of the business and a pretty integrated view of what this business means uh, for you know the market itself and to support uh, other companies in achieving their their goals when they are not in our industry. So that's okay, me. I, 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 I got a stop. I got a million. I got a million. You just you just blew me away. I had no idea. So first of all, where were you born? I was born in Cuba. That's, You're born in Cuba, so you went from that, Cuba to that's Cuba. There, yeah, yeah, Cuba to Spain. Well, well, my friend, uh, that's more complicated than that. From Cuba, I went to Ukraine. See the flag there? Mm-hmm. I went. I I live in Ukraine for six and a half years of my life. So I studied there. So, which, by the way, right now is, is that situation kind of yeah. makes me very sad. How what how is that country and the situation they are having right now with with the war and things? I have still have friends there. So, yeah. So, and then from there to Spain. So that's uh, two steps. So where did you train to be a commercial airline pilot? I I, I trained in Ukraine. Yeah. In in Ukraine. Yeah. How, how did you, 
Tell us about that. How did well, you? Well, it is it's very simple. You you when you so I needed to to take the road of exile and needed to leave my country. I couldn't practice my profession there, so I I went to Spain. And when you when you are in that situation, you don't have too much to choose. Okay, so you need to uh, you need to first try to sustain your family. And at the time, it was only my wife and I, but obviously we had plans and we had still. The, the broader family that you support being a good son or a good grandson. So um, I had that opportunity. So, so I kind of don't forget about the aviation, but I needed to take an opportunity on the infrastructure uh, work. Sure. Uh, yeah. And that changed my life for better. I totally believe that doing, I mean, doing that transition changed my life for the better. And that's the reason I'm here today because from there, I started to talk about maintenance, about infrastructure, about the cycle of the any assets. So all of those things were transferable skills that I brought to my current uh, career path. Yeah, the third one. Um, so it was, it, was, it was great. I came back to Russia. I, I worked for the World Bank in Russia uh, developing some programs for their roads and road construction for two and a half, two and a half years. Uh, and then from there, I came back to Spain and then went to different countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you do, I'm going to go, I'm still hung up on the fact that you're a pilot. Do you fly? I'm a I'm a fly engineer, not a pilot. Okay. I used to fly in the middle or in the back of the pilots. Yeah. Oh. Okay, but do all, you all the system, all the so three computers for me right now that I have in front of me is nothing compared with what I used to see in my sitting in my seat at the at the at the plane. Very good, very good. So I, I gotta say, you you win you win the award for the most fascinating back. You just threw a huge curve. I did oh. not expect any of that. <laughs> I did not expect any of that. So as we look at this amazing story, right? Luis, I also look at you and I say, how old are you? I mean, you seem to live like, you've lived like 10 lives. I don't need you to tell me, but you've lived like 10 I, uh, lives. Yes, I can. I can. I, you can say that, to be honest, 55, man. In 55, lived I've lived so many a few lives. lives. Yes. You've lived so many lives. My yeah. goodness. My yeah. goodness. So that's a perfect, that's a perfect segue into what we're talking about. My God, I didn't even realize what a perfect guest you are for this. So as we segue into the topic of this season, so you've been, you've lived this life. You've lived, it sounds like a movie, Luis. Your, your life sounds like a movie. So as we get into the, the world that we live in now, facilities management, corporate real estate, you know, we see each other at conferences. Why do you do it still? And why do you do it with so much in enthusiasm and the if i had to describe you in one word luis it would be bright like you bring a brightness to everything so why why are you still here what what brings you joy and what's your relationship with your career today thank you for that i i to be honest i do not try to do that mm, uh, on purpose is the way i relate to whatever i do and i suppose People would have said the same in my other careers, okay? Because I love interacting with people and, and this is a bigger interaction, okay? When you are, imagine the aviation, okay? When you are in the cabin, three people, best case scenario, a crew, and then you go to this market when my crew today is 300 and, 355 people, okay? So it's a bigger, it's like a big boat, a big plane. Yeah. So I kind of interact with all the passengers. So, and not only that, you interact with your, your clients and your customers and, and the visitors and things like that in, in the industry. So look, I, I am full of energy. I think uh, I value how people see myself, uh, you know, giving myself to anything that I do. And if you see me down, it's because I am very, very down. Okay, and and there are things that obviously put me down, uh, but the reality is that you know when I relate with other people and 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 we need to achieve something, it's better to bring your your best side, okay, your bright side. 
we do this for a living. And, and if you do this for a living, you better enjoy, okay? And look, I enjoy it a lot. Playing golf, for example, is one of my hobbies and the things that I, I like. So, but I, when, I, when I am at work, I am no different than I am playing golf. I most recognize I enjoy more being at the course than being, yeah, uh, working. But if, if you bring that mindset of the first T, first T uh, emotion, you can, it transpires. And hopefully it contaminates others when, when you work with you, not only your teammates, your uh, your reportees or direct reports or your bosses, but also your clients and people that interact with you. And by the way, one of the things that I, I, I like about these 20 years in this industry is the friendships and the relationship that I have done, I have created using that mantra, you know? Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been great, yeah? Yeah, and I, I agree with you because I always say this to people, whether it's somebody I'm working out with or somebody I'm working on a project at work, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Just what you said. On the golf course, I bring I, I bring my best. In the workplace, I bring my best. And I think for the younger generation, I think that's a really good teaching point. It's like the weight, whether you're into video games, whether you're into sports, whether you're into fitness, bring that same energy and bring that th- same enthusiasm to your work and to anything you do in life. Because if you don't, you'll feel very unfulfilled. Totally. I mean, somebody said uh, that success is not key to happiness. Yeah. It's happiness what is key to success. And, and it's the other way. And, that's, it, it. and that, that's what it is. I mean, you, you should not work to get the happiness or do anything to get the happiness. You bring the happiness and success will come along even when there are ups and downs in, in your career and in your day to day and in your relationship with, you know, your colleagues or clients. So if, if you do that, consciousness or, or unconsciousness, um, uh, you will, you probably will be successful. And I don't consider myself myself successful. I mean, I just consider myself a good, good professional. You, as you said at the be- at the beginning, and then uh, somehow accomplishing some things that I have done, and in others probably not. Yeah. To me, you're successful because you exude what you just described that that enthusiasm and that happiness. And if you have those things then you're successful. So from my perspective, you're very successful in that regard. So with all those things, with with all that approach to your work, to your life, to your hobbies, so you're obviously capable of doing a lot of things, right? So you're a jack of all trades. Why are you still in this space leading a team of 300 professionals for one of the biggest real estate firms in the world? Well, specifically now at Newmark, yes, um, I think we have a big opportunity to uh, build something, not from scratch, but based on the history of this company have, which is amazing, and 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 the the history of acquisitions and putting together a plan to create a, a global corporate service division. I think I saw the opportunity, first of all, to work with an amazing group of people. Okay. Otherwise, I wouldn't come. I mean, my our team right now is very strong and is is ensemble of very very talented people from different places of, of the industry. I had the opportunity again to work with some of my old former colleagues, talking about friendships, about long lasting relationship that you create uh, uh, across the years when you have a good performance and people look at you that way. And third, I thought this is a an, uh, Training for me is is still knowledge that I will acquire doing this uh, that I haven't done at this level in the past. So this is a new territory for me, growing an international or global business, um, not from scratch, but almost uh, creating a new team uh, and assembling people from you know the history of the company with the new blood that is coming from other places. 
and and look, is is going really well. I mean, we are having fun. Very important piece of working with me. I want my team, my people to have fun while they are doing that. And if we achieve that, again, we bring happiness. We are going to be successful. Yeah. So I'm, I'm 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 very very fortunate to have this opportunity, and hopefully it will it will end in a, in the right place. Yeah. And I think my career was, I never planned to end up in this space. I accidentally fell into this world 20 years ago in New York City. But the point is what I liked and what part of my why is my career kept growing and new challenges kept presenting themselves. And I was able to be approach them the same way, enthusiastic, apply what I learned in the past take on a new role, and in that new role, learn something that I could potentially apply in the future. And it sounds like that same thing kind of happened to you to where your career and where you were in the corporate real estate facilities world presented new challenges that excited you. Is that fair to say? 100%. And you, by the way, everything that you're saying to me is kind of, you can put a mirror because you are, I, I love your enthusiasm, the things you do, how you, you know, connect with the market and connected us through you and through the, this podcast is a great example of that. But tell you one thing, once I decided that this would be my, I didn't, I didn't, at the beginning, I didn't think it would be a 20 year career or probably I will retire already in this career because one, I'm having fun, and the second, I'm too old to start a new one. Okay, but the, but the reality is that once you decide that, at least in my case, I put myself hundred percent. So meaning, yeah, I became member of IFMA. I started to study. I went to conference. I presented in some of the, the forums. I became a board member of. Euro FM, I've been all over Europe working on the FM when Euro FM was, we had only, you know, 23 corporations as sponsors that were our members. And I was a board member trying to bring companies and we put together a lot of, you know, uh, stakeholders of the market supporting that. Then I came to US, I was always supporting IFMA in Spain. Then I came to US uh, I, I founded, so I was one of the founder members of, of the coordinate uh, at the time was a networking group in Spain. Yeah. Okay. So 20, 25 people got together. Too much wine for 25 people after the, the event, by the way. But it was amazing. We did it at Microsoft in Madrid. And then I came here again. I reconnected with the, with the industry. I tried to train myself to this opportunity. So you got no way for things to happen. So you need to get ready for when that thing happens, that opportunity comes, you are prepared to take on the challenge. And you will never be 100% prepared. Don't expect that. And I never, I am, as I told you, I'm still learning. I'm a serious, I am seriously still learning, but I think I was half ready to take on this role or take the previous role or take the previous role when Me they too. Can. Every one of them, every one of them, I was like, I know a little bit of this, but I'm gonna have to figure out, you know, the other, the other fifty percent of this. Exactly. Like, and what, what you have to avoid, though, and if this could be a teaching moment for any of the younger generation listening to this podcast, you can't fall into what's called the imposter syndrome. You can't feel like I'm not good enough. I'm not really. This guy for the longest time when I was when I took on a sales role, I didn't feel like a salesperson. I'm like, oh, I'm not a salesperson, but yet I was, you know, winning contracts and helping customers succeed. It's like you are a salesperson. You may approach it differently or think about it differently, but you can't you can't fall into that. I'm not good enough. I'm not, you know, and it sounds like you never, you always approach it as this is a new challenge. I am good enough and I'm gonna learn learn the rest of it, right? Is that fair to say? Fair, very. That's exactly what I, what I wanted to say. If somebody hears this is that you need to, you know, overcome those fears. And it, it, the imposter syndrome is a good example. You will have it, whether or not. You just need to overcome, yeah? Yes. It, 
and 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 be over it. And there are so many resources in the, in this industry. Another another why I am here is I just I just last week we went to we had a a, a small gathering of the sponsor of the coordinate chapter here in 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 the Bay Area speaking about how we support the industry, how we support a new generation and. There are resources for anyone to grow, yeah? And if you have an, indus an industry that is so collaborative like this one, um, you, I mean, you, you should stay, okay? I, I was listening to your podcast, the, other, the podcast from Anya, great friend of mine, Anya Austri, about, yeah, don't be a broker ever, yes? Like that father, and, and he said, look, this is an industry that I, I bring anyone if people ask me, what do you think? Should I go to the to the, the corporate real estate? Say, yes, don't think twice. If you if you don't want to be, you know, uh, a civil engineer or an architect, or even if you're an architect, but if you want to have a broad, if you're a people person, and definitely a sales component is in every single thing we do. Yeah, everything. Um, this is a great a great industry to be on, and you know. Speaking about uh, uh, the situation that we are having here in Silicon Valley right now with the bank, and yes. probably you heard about it. Obviously, and not only our Silicon Valley bank, but others bank. The, we are a contra crisis industry. We, as part of our industry, is totally contra crisis. So we may have great opportunities to redo or reorient those portfolio or improve the services to those employees. So there are a lot of things that happens uh, that happen in the industry when when the the, the economic uh, cycle is down, we may go up. So um, yeah, it's a great way also to you know get some financial stability and, and you know support yourself and your family. Well, I like what you just said there about looking for opportunities to basically help to where if there there's a crisis going on, those of us in this industry can find ways to improve certain aspects of the circumstance by virtue of what we do. Is that, is that fair? Yeah, yeah exactly. What you're saying. As you were speaking, I got a, an announcement that Silicon Valley had 2.6 billions in loans to go for real estate. So that's how that how in external factors can influence our industry from one Friday to one Monday. So we didn't know that last week, the beginning of the week. So imagine how, impactful uh, uh, macroeconomical um, topics, issues, or situations can influence this industry, like any other, but definitely the, this one, because we are, we, we, we operate across every single industry. Yeah. A very, uh, as I said, I think the, the, the skills, the knowledge that you acquire in this industry uh, are very transferable to any other. So I have been twice in the banking industry, twice in my life. Uh, so on the uh, on the service pro on the client side, so on the occupier side, and you know it was very not not simple. I would say you you need to learn, you need to uh, change a little bit your your way of seeing the corporate real estate when you are a client when you are a service provider. But your skills, your knowledge are totally you know um, transferable to one position or another. So. Yeah, another another advantage of being in this industry. Yeah. So let me let me ask you this, Luis. As I, as I sit through and I'm listening to your story, and again, in a lot of ways, you're inspiring me um, with you know your story and your out. I like your outlook. I really like your outlook, and it's you know I think anybody who would work for you would be lucky to work for you with you. Anybody, and I'm not just saying that because you, you it's infectious. You know, you, you said that earlier. It's really infectious. So let me ask you this. Do you mentor, do you mentor any of the younger, do you have people that you mentor? Yeah. Yeah. I have done that officially through mentorship programs, especially with IFMA here in the Bay Area. Uh, but I always do that unofficially. Okay. I have a couple of people right now that, you know, son of a friend or a daughter of a friend that is, you know, asking me, what do you think? And to me, that was a big, big moment in my life. I should tell you, 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 
I feel very young, okay? I feel. I don't feel that I can mentor somebody because I need mentorship, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but the moment I had my first time, my first mentor mentorship, like somebody asked me, hey, I want you to be my mentor to choose. I was like, what? Are you asking me? What do you think I know, okay? Yeah. And over the years, probably the last 10 years, I've been mentoring somebody, yeah? Uh, and 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 th that's on the kind of more structured plan and the non-structured plan. I do have people from all over the globe. You, I, I suppose you have the same people write you in LinkedIn. I do not, I don't have any anybody that write me in LinkedIn asking me for something that related to work. Some, you know, un unsolicited things I do not. But if you write me and say, what do you think to apply for this job? Or what do you think about this? I am studying the F FMP, if you are at IFMA or MCR, what do you think that will be applicable? I will always respond. So right. in that sense, yes. And I am very, very happy. Well, look, I told one, one of my mentees recently, in the next five years, you will, you would be, so I'm here now, yeah? I, and that person is growing, growing, growing. I think in the next five years or from now to five years from now, that would change. So it would be, I hope at, at some point I will have one of my bosses, one of my mentees, to be honest. Yeah. That would be a great lesson to me and humbling experience. But that will happen. If you don't, if you are not ready for that, it's wrong. I mean, that will happen because it's a normal process, you know? And, you know, it's, uh, I hope that will happen soon, to be honest. Yeah, and in a lot of ways, like my career, I can attribute a lot of my success in my career to what you just described there. And Richard Hubry, right? You know Richard Hubry. Yeah. Richard Hubry means the world to me. Really? I would, yeah. I would not be in this industry without Richard Hubry. Richard Hubry um, actually helped implement an IWMS system, or at the time it was CAFM. Yeah. It's a CAFM system. Helped implement that. And then he moved on from the company he was at. And uh, I was doing some other things and I ran into him. And he said, hey, Bob, I'm at this company right now. We're looking for people like you who know this space. Uh, I'll give you a call. And he called me. And Luis, I was getting ready to take a construction job. I was getting ready to take a construction job. And this was right before um, the mortgage crisis back in, you know. 2009, 2008. Yeah. 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 So, and they were all, they were freezing all construction. They were construction. I would have been low man on the totem pole. They were letting people go, but he brought me in. And he trained me. He took me to meetings and I would sit there and he would give me, he would give me all the dirty work. He'd, he'd do all the talking. He'd say, okay, Bob, now you got to go do these spreadsheets, do these requirements, documents, do all these things. And at the time, um, I was just so grateful because I saw the way things were going in the industry and in the world at, at large. And I still had a job and I had a job where I was making more money than I ever made before. And here I am all these years later, still doing it. And I see Richard at Cornette and he's like, Bob, I just, I love what you've been doing. And now I'm a vice president and um, he's just so proud of me. I know he is. He's just so proud of me. And, you know, you know him, I know him, we all talk and we work, we're working on some stuff together and it all comes together. But without people like Richard Hubry and the Luises of the world, I mean, it, it's up to you all and me too. I love, I love mentoring the next generation and I love spending the time with, with my much younger colleagues who are new to their career. We need people like you, Luis, and I, I need you to keep, I, I'm asking you as somebody who is a product of great mentors, right? I had many mentors and I've talked about this before. Richard's just the perfect one to talk on because he still works at Newmark. You know him, I know him. It's part of the reason why we're kind of all talking in general is we need people like you, Luis, to stay engaged with the IFMA, stay engaged with the Cornets so that you can usher in that next generation of leadership. 
Yeah, you don't need to convince me. I am I am all in, to be honest. And I, uh, you know, I was in the IFMA Global Board for three years. That's the term you have there. I I continue there. I want to dedicate more time now to coordinate after, you know, especially here in uh, my chapter is a very um, impressive and very um, active chapter here in the West in the NorCal NorCal chapter and and the president is a good friend of mine one of those people that i met in this industry larry warfer a good, good friend and other people there um rafi spiritu so, so in the bay area you have plenty of people to be in this podcast and you would be amazed of their stories and things like that but but i am i i think that's my uh if there would be some legacy would be that you know the, the, the people that will be behind us doing and said, hey, I, you know, like like you did now for Richard, I hope somebody would say for, about me. Yeah, it would be great. One person, enough. Ten, even better. But I'm sure, you know, uh, and, and look, and I have done this in multiple countries, multiple places. So I, I see some people that started with me as a receptionist, receptionist, okay? And they are now... Vice President of Companies in, in, in Europe doing, you know, multinational business. And I'm ready. And, and, and at the time when, you know, when you, you take a person that is a receptionist, because it's a story, I mean, it's just, a, it was John, was the first job they took and said, I see an opportunity in you and you can do this other job. I said, oh, I don't think so, maybe. Yes, do it, do it. And then one step, another step, another step. Then you look back and said, you were in the reception. So every time I see a reception, I say, you can be an account manager. You know that? Every time. Yeah. He said, you want to be an account manager? You can be. You can be me. You can be whatever. Because this is a market that allows you to learn uh, empirically. Yeah. Everything that we do. Yeah. Including that one or a, an analyst doing uh, brokerage, you know, an analyst that um, good friend of mine was an analyst at CBRE. Now she's, I don't know, she's a very prominent researcher and said, oh, look at that, you know? And that has happened in only five years. Imagine what can happen in 10, yeah? Yeah. Impressive, yeah. So as we wrap things up here, I think that's the perfect note to kind of end on. What I took away from this, and I always like to end these with kind of, you know, what I take away and then a little bit of gratitude and towards you. Um, what I take away from this, this conversation with you, Luis, is the way you do anything is the way you do everything. And if we can, you know, make that impression on the younger generation to remember as they approach their careers, their personal lives, um, to keep consistent and keep that consistent enthusiasm. And when you're doing, you shouldn't, Success shouldn't make you happy, but when you find happiness, you're successful. And I think that's the most um, genuine and most heartwarming message I can get out of one of these conversations. You are exactly as I build you to be. You are eloquent, you're professional, you're bright, you're enthusiastic. And for all those reasons, Luis, I want you to remember you're successful. You're successful <laughs> for all those reasons. And I learned that from you and I am um, putting that back out there to you. And I really appreciate you taking this time with us today. I appreciate all the work you do in IFMA, inter both, uh, both here in the United States and internationally, Cornet the same. Having people like you in the industry gives me great hope that we are setting this up for a much brighter future. So thank you very much, Luis. I really appreciate the time you spent with me today. My name is Bob Masicetti with Nuvolo. That's Luis Mejorn uh, from New York. <laughs> yeah, you, you do it much better than I do. I flunked Spanish. Uh, from Newmark, this is Connected Conversations. I thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on the interwebs. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, Bob.